A big topic in the watch community right now is the concept of an in-house watch movement. Now, traditionally, this was an impressive feat because it told you that the watch company was serious about making, contributing to all components of the watch. Um, the thing nowadays, though, is a lot of the watch companies in existence now are resurrected brands that don't really have that much in common with the original. So when there's talk about an in-house movement being developed, it usually means that the company is paying some other company to create a movement for them and put it in. And uh, it almost is as if it's becoming a requirement with a lot of companies. It's a, a badge of honor now. But the questions you really have to ask yourself are, A, does this in-house movement design bring anything new to the table compared to what's available? And B, how are you going to have this watch serviced? Because the problem, and I've learned this the hard way when you start getting into uh, fancier in-house movement watches, is that when it comes to service it, you don't necessarily have the luxury of finding an independent repair person because parts are going to be difficult to access. And sometimes you have no choice but to bite the bullet and go to the factory authorized service center. And the companies know that, and once they get you, they can charge you basically anything they want, because if you need something that you just can't have fixed, you're going to rely on them. And um, it's a really tricky thing, and you should, the more you collect, the more snobbish you get. And, uh, you know, you start to look down at basic movements like the ETA 2824s and things like that. And it's true, the more expensive it gets, the more difficult it is to be justify paying that much money. But you never really think of the, the long end of it, namely servicing and parts. And uh, that has been known to bite many people in the ass at the end. So that's some food for thought, and uh, there we go.